Ginger are overrated as a band. Change my mind. What is up, everyone, and welcome back. Yes, you heard that correctly. I feel that Ginger as a band are overrated, and I'm going to tell you why. First, I want to let everyone who sees this video know that disrespectful, insulting, toxic posts will not be tolerated, and they're never tolerated here on the channel. If you make them in the comment section, they're going to be deleted, and I'm going to block you, and we'll move on. You won't be able to post here. Spirited debate. Adult discussion. Respectful adult discussion is strongly and highly encouraged. Toxic behavior, insults, cursing. The usual stuff that you see in a lot of comment sections are not tolerated here on the channel. I don't like it and neither do my subscribers. And that's why they tend to stick around the comment sections here because I don't put up with it and neither do they. So, just don't make those kind of posts because I'll delete them and I'll, and I'll block you. Too easy? Too easy. Now, I'm a Ginger fan. I have been since late 2015. Before the video for Pisces blew them up, and I, which I'm very happy about. I am incredibly happy that word of mouth and sharing of that video were able to take a band and increase their popularity and get them on tours and packages. And I think it's great. But the problem that comes along with that kind of skyrocketing success, especially in the age of social media when somebody goes viral, is you get a lot of the more casual fans that come into it and suddenly the band gets blown up or artist gets blown up to unrealistic proportions and suddenly they can do no wrong they're perfect they're beyond reproach anybody who disagrees with you is incorrect and so on and so forth so that's kind of happened and unfortunately it's caused a lot of hype and a lot of boosting of the band now i think the band are incredibly talented and i think tatiana is a really good singer i don't think she's a great singer i don't think she's utterly amazing and i don't think that she's something that I haven't heard before. But I'm a really long time metalhead and fan of metal, and I've been listening to it for over 30 years. So as a student of it, I'm I've had a chance to hear many amazing bands, both male and female, that are able to mix the cleans and the aggressives together and do it really well both in the studio and live. As a band you, know, you listen to a lot of their music and it's on the simpler side you know they're they've got strong grooves but the guitar player is not incredibly technical don't get a lot of solos their new drummer is really good i really enjoy the the jazz inspired work that he plays i like his feel as opposed to the drummer that played on King of Everything. And their bass player is fantastic. He's a really good player. When Pisces dropped, it really blew people away. The studio or the live in studio version. And I say that with quotations because it really isn't live. And you can tell. If you're familiar with it, if you've been in the studio, you can tell that the, and they even mention it in the description of the video that it was recorded live in the studio. And then a lot of stuff went on in post-processing and vocally, you can hear that. You can hear a lot of vocal layering, especially in the aggressives. You can hear a lot of post-processing. You can hear 
the timbre of her voice get changed and altered. And that's where a lot of the quote unquote vocal coach reactions of that video miss. It's where they miss it and they're not catching that. If you see her live, it's not that clean. You're not getting the same depth out of her voice. She's really, really strong in the studio and she's just good live. And that's okay. But at the same time, the the fans, and it's not the band, it's the fans are blowing it up to be so much more. I think she's talented with her lyrics. And I think that as a singer, she's a perfect storm. And the reason I say that is she is a dynamic vocalist, a good lyricist, and more importantly, from a marketability standpoint, she has a pop edge to her voice and she's attractive. Suddenly, that alone propels the band to heights that other bands, even other bands that have female singers, might not reach. The other big thing that I'm starting to see a lot and hear a lot from people is that she's the first to do it or she's the first to mix the cleans and the aggressives or they've never heard growls like that out of a female and if they're casual fans they probably haven't however there are thousands of bands out there going back to late 80s and early 90s even that have had female vocalists doing extreme music and doing extreme metal and doing a phenomenal job of it. Go back and back to 94 and look at Karen Crisis. And look what she was capable of. Bands like Walls of Jericho. Getting into death metal like Landmine Marathon. Progressive, and San progressive stuff like ETHS from France. Straight Line Stitch. Melodic death metal like Like This City. Death Metal like Dreaming Dead. There's a lot of bands out there that have been doing it. You can also look at Otep. And even though I'm not a fan of her, personally, I've had this chance to see her live and she does, she does a pretty solid job of nailing her vocals live. But women have been doing it for quite a long time and it hasn't really been that much longer than the men have been doing it. And as much as I hate to say it, I feel like there's a double standard imposed on women vocalists as opposed to men. And I've done other videos on the subject about female fronted, but Tatiana's not doing anything that a lot of the male vocalists out there aren't. But metal is a male dominated market. Most male metal fans are heterosexual. And it's they're more apt to want to tune in and look at an attractive female growling and bellowing her guts out and in a studio or a live environment or a music video than they are to look at a bunch of sweaty dudes doing the same thing. And that's a big element of Tatiana is she hate, she hits a lot of that stuff. I truly do not believe that the band as a whole would be as big if they had a male singer. I think that there wouldn't be the same amount of hype. I think that you wouldn't hear the same amount of stuff being bandied around like perfect. And personally, perfection doesn't exist on any level. It doesn't exist musically or anything or anywhere else. 
no one's going to be perfect. It's an unreal expectation and it's an unreal and an unreachable thing to say about a band or anyone is they're perfect because there's always going to be some sort of flaw, even though musicians and recording engineers agonize over the, that unreal expectation of trying to make things perfect, which to be honest, I think makes music sterile and I think is impacting a lot of recordings these days is we're too adamant about wanting perfection that we miss the human element. We miss those little things. We miss those little mistakes. If you look at Tatiana's vocals live, you're going to see that she has pitch issues. You're going to see that she doesn't reach the same depth in her growls, especially in her lows, and her technique's a little off. You know, and that's not a knock. It's, I'm not trying to be insulting by that, but it's easy to have an incredible growl when you have multiple layers of vocals and you have a good amount of processing going on it's harder to do it live and she does have a pretty strong growl live but it's not anywhere near the level of what she is in the studio angela Gla angela gossow from arch enemy had the same issue she had a lot of vocal processing on her voice and so do a lot of men a lot of male singers also have that same thing. When you look at Tatiana in a live setting, you also see, and you can hear it, there's a lot of mic cupping. There's also a lot of inconsistency in the mic cupping. Either she's cupping one side or she's cupping the other, or she's cupping both. And part of it's deliberate. Part of it seems like you run into with a lot of singers where it's more of a security blanket. However, when you cup a mic, when you cup a mic, you kill frequencies. You kill frequencies. You make things sound muffled and muted. And a lot of singers will use that to get a little bit more resonance and help get that deeper growl to work instead of actually developing their vocal techniques and being able to get it that way it's an easy fix you have you hear some people and over you know overall from a how it sounds perspective it's going to be personal opinion on a technical standpoint you lose frequencies that's a fact it's going to sound muffled that's a fact but whether some people like that sound or not that's going to be subjective and you see a lot of that with her and i think in the shuffle when it comes to comments that i see more and more it's become a it's become very much about tatiana and like with a lot of female fronted bands as much as i hate that term bands that in this case, it kind of works in context. The band gets lost. And the band, you know, they're talented players. Like I said, I like them. I don't think they're, I don't think they're amazing, amazing and they're certainly not the, the best, most technical players I've heard. But they do get overlooked. Live, live, it's different. And I feel bad. The drummer is kind of, the drummer is semi-flashy but their guitar player and their bass player don't move a whole lot there isn't a ton of stage presence and even with tatiana there's a lot more dancing and i guess if you want to call that stage presence but i don't get the connection the band certainly isn't intense and they just kind of stand there and play their instruments and they stay in their boxes that might work if you have a front man that's fantastic you know Ian from Priest gets away with just kind of standing there. But usually there's other elements that are able to, to make up for that. Whether you love them or you hate them, Killswitch Engage are an absolutely phenomenal live band. because Partially because Adam 
D is just an absolute nut job. Iron Maiden are an absolutely amazing live band. Black Sabbath, when they had Dio on vocals, are an amazing live band. Metallica are an amazing live band. And it's because there's a lot of stage presence involved. And the guys and Gal and Ginger, they just don't have it as much. So that's another thing. And all that combines to hit that point where the hype is really bigger than what the band is delivering. I think they're getting better. I think their songwriting is improving, though I'm still not sold. I'm, and people are going to look at me like I'm nuts. Of course, they probably already are at this point if you've gotten this far in the video. But Perennial's already been incredibly hyped. And I think it's an, I think it's a solid track. I don't think it's a great track. I think 8 is a solid track. I did a video on that a while ago. And it still feels like they're they're almost trying to find their way. And they're trying to figure out what is and isn't going to work from a market from a marketability perspective. So they're still tinkering with their songwriting. And we'll see how that goes. But I they have the band seems like they're still not completely consistent and completely comfortable with what Ginger is going to sound like in the next record. And that makes a big impact on whether I consider a band to be perfect, whether I consider a band to truly be worth the hype. And in this case, I just don't feel like they're there yet. Another thing is, you know, they're really, they're a good band. They're an enjoyable band, but are they as good as some of their peers that haven't gotten the same amount of notice from that's certainly good can be good when it comes to sound is subjective but i feel like there's a lot of bands especially coming out of that same part of the world russia moldova ukraine you're seeing a lot of bands that are that are having female members and male members but that are getting overlooked or in the case of a band like Blind Ivy, who are still maturing and growing, I feel like they're not getting looked at as much due to the fact that their singer might not be perceived as attractive as compared to Tatiana from Ginger. And it's unfortunate because, well, looks matter. Now, personally, and I will admit that this is my opinion i think the underarms are a better band from a technical perspective and i like the vocal dynamics between both the male and the female singing much much more but i think there's a lot of other bands out there that are still undiscovered even from that part of the world male and female that are just as good and the biggest question out there i have for so many of you is do you truly believe that if Ginger had a male singer as opposed to Tatiana, or if Tatiana did not look the way she looks, if Tatiana was overweight, if she wasn't petite, would she be made up to be the way she or Would people be blowing her up as much? Would people be blowing the band up as much? From what I've seen, being a fan of music for as long as I have been, being a fan of metal for as long as I have been, I don't believe it would be that kid. What I truly believe that the band would be above that would be average to above average, and I don't think that they would be in the position they're in. So, all that said, I'm a fan. I enjoy their music. But I don't believe that it measures up to all of the hype and all of the 
attached things that are being said and blown up by fans, a lot of it being more casual fans. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. I love you guys. I'm going to be really interested to see what you have to say in the comments below. Thank you so much for those of you that have been here for so long. I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you. Thank you to my law enforcement, military veterans, and first responders for what you do every single day. I love you. As always, you've been awesome. I've been Bald Man. I'll see you in the next one. Be excellent to each other. And keep headbanging.